Hey peeps, Jess here, and today we're taking on Molly Moon's ice cream. If you haven't had Molly Moon's before, they're kind of the quintessential Seattle ice cream at this point. They have at least eight locations at last check, and they're known for sourcing a lot of local stuff, working with local farms. So we're gonna taste that salad ice cream and see if I can find a new favorite. We're starting with sweet cream. I ordered most from PCC, and a few were delivered because I just couldn't get everybody. There are three sort of zones of Molly Moon's ice cream right now. There's the stuff you can get in stores, the stuff you can get in pint shops, and they're really random seasonals one of which was available for one day this year. I tried. Sweet cream is effectively their vanilla. It's meant to be a blank canvas. Eating a bunch of ice cream by the pint the day before the election really begins is a good call. Cheers. What you're tasting is milk. It's creamy, it's tangy. There's actually a grassiness to this ice cream that almost makes it like eating a yogurt ice cream, but not as intense. If you're expecting that vanilla light sweetness, you're not gonna get that here. That kind of makes it a neat thing to play with because there's flavor. I love that it has a little bit of a dimension to it. However, if you're looking for a root beer float ice cream, this might get a bit intense. Like I would definitely pair this appropriately with your root beer. Next, strawberry. And now you can kind of see the difference here. This one was picked up from a grocery store and this one was picked up from the actual Molly Moon Scoop Shop. A little bit of difference. So immediately I get this super strong, sweet strawberry scent. It reminds me a lot of Nestle Quick, actually. So I'm super curious to see how this tastes. It's been a while, and I do remember it being on the sweet side, but quite tasty. Cheers. So one way I've described Molly Moon to people in the past when they've asked is it's retro with a twist. And this is definitely bringing in the retro. You've got a super sweet but clean strawberry flavor. It's kind of strawberry milk in ice cream form, and that is not a bad thing. Like this would make some freaking amazing milkshakes, which is probably what I'm gonna do after this video is over. I mean, it's creamy, it's sweet, and the strawberry is definitely coming through really strongly, but it's not as intense in overall ice cream as you might expect. It's just nicely mellow, but still clean strawberry flavor. Next, cookie dough. I picked up a mini moon. They're expensive per amount, but when you're buying this many pints, I wanted to save money wherever I could. Also, they're cute. Actually, they have, they have vending machines for these in parts of town, and I kind of love that, but it's expensive. They even have their own little spoon. It makes me feel like a little kid again. Did you ever get those orange sherbet and vanilla ice cream packs? Because I had those a lot as a kid, and then never again. So what surprises me right off the bat is that the ice cream is a different color than the sweet cream. This is kind of a cinnamon brown color, very light brown. So I'm guessing they flavored the ice cream as well. I haven't had cookie dough from them in a while. And then you can see that nice big cookie dough piece right there. I'll get that. The cookie dough piece is giant. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, cheers. So what I got immediately was cinnamon. The ice cream is very strongly cinnamon scented with a little hint of brown sugar. And then as you get through that giant piece of cookie dough, it opens up a lot of brown sugar and chocolate. It's very satisfying in a little kid getting that giant piece of cookie dough in the ice cream kind of way. I would like some pieces to be smaller. That was a little hard to eat in one bite, but it's really fun. I feel like I should mention that while the cookie dough is vegan, the ice cream itself is not vegan. There will be a vegan ice cream in this and they usually have a few vegan offerings, but that is not the focus of this video. Though I wish they had the vegan cookie dough as a regular because this is really nice. Like it's a very trip down memory lane kind of ice cream. Also, this is really great for those of us who are afraid to eat raw cookie dough. I love the idea of it. I have way too many food sensitivities to risk it. Next, salted caramel mini style. I've eaten a lot of the salted caramel because in grad school, my favorite I'm having a bad day and need a little pick me up treat was to go get the Molly's favorite, which has the salted caramel, the melted chocolate, and also candied hazelnuts with hot fudge, whipped cream, and a cherry and I now can't have it in its full form because hazelnut allergy, boo. But it was definitely a thing that I found very comforting and sometimes you just need a giant hot fudge sundae. Cheers. Okay, this is bold. This wants you to know that it has salt. Like the first note is salt and caramel and it is just going for it. This is one I'm really glad I ate with the melted chocolate most of the time because they do balance each other out really well. This is a very, forward salted caramel with nice burnt sugar notes at the end, but it is very intense up front. Tasty though. Because it's so bold, it's one that I really do wanna add stuff to because it can take it. It can still be really present strong ice cream flavor against as much hot fudge as you want. And on a month like this, where you really need all the hot fudge you can muster, 
this may be the ice cream for you. Next, melted chocolate. So this is using Theo chocolate ice cream. If you haven't heard of Theo chocolate, they are the largest bean to bar chocolate only maker in the world at this point. Actually, if you ever go to Fremont in Seattle, you can tour their factory and you can smell them for blocks. It's amazing. It almost smells malted, but lightly. A little hint of vanilla. Cheers. Kind of going back to the strawberry, it's a very mild, almost cocoa-y experience. The chocolate isn't very intense, but it's a very comforting note. A lot of cocoa and vanilla. If you're someone who loves hot cocoa, this is basically it in ice cream form. Which kind of explains why it goes with the salted caramel. It's got that like cocoa base noteness to it. That means that the salted caramel can shine with that upfront saltiness and salt enhances chocolate so well so you'd have more of a chocolate flavor. Yeah, these two go great together. It's probably my favorite combination of their ice creams and I highly recommend trying some. I'm gonna have a lot of that after I'm done shooting. Next we have Scout Mint, which actually is kind of a asterisk here. So the flavor you can pick up at Molly Moon's shops, that is the actual stores, is Scout Mint. The one you can pick up in grocery stores is Scout Mint Brownie which somehow I couldn't pick up, and so we have Scout Mint, which is close enough. Scout Mint does in fact use Girl Scout cookies. These are Thin Mints in here. Girl Scouts Western Washington has generally been pretty chill. Girl Scouts USA, eh. Fine, we've got mint ice cream with Thin Mints. The mint smell immediately in here is intense. I know they're using peppermint oil because I was checking the ingredients, but it is, it's everywhere. Yeah, I feel like I'm going to be eating a York peppermint patty. Oh, cheers. Well, it is so intensely mint. There's two kinds of mint in culinary world, effectively. There's peppermint oil, which is what you think of when you think of mint candies. It's very sharp, very brisk is a nice way to describe it, and it has a lot of intense forward flavor. The mint that we're seeing more and more in the culinary world is from fresh mint, and it has a really deep herbal note. At this stage in my culinary life, I prefer fresh peppermint and fresh mint. I really like that herbalness. It just tastes good. I like eating a garden in ice cream form. This though takes me back to my childhood when mint chocolate chip was my absolute favorite ice cream. And this is just it on steroids. There is so much mint and the thin mint provides a little bit of crunch, a little bit of chocolate, but it is like eating a York peppermint patty in ice cream form. And I think that's really cool and very nostalgic. Last, definitely not least, Yeti! It's sweet cream ice cream with vanilla bean caramel, house-made granola, and Theo chocolate chunks. It is definitely one that is more than some of its parts, and you just have to try it. Even when you see the flax seeds, because this is Seattle and we have flax seeds in our granola. And I know at least one of you is thinking, flax seeds in my ice cream? Yes, it's tasty and you will like it. But I want all of that caramel right there. Cheers. Mmm. That bite was hiding a huge amount of the granola, which was awesome! The granola has a lot more seeds in it than oats, and so you get this really nice nutty crunch from the seeds because they've been toasted. Then you have all of the sweetness and intense brown sugar notes from the caramel, and then you have the really evenness of the sweet cream ice cream bringing it all together. Like how I mentioned way early in the video that sweet cream is kind of a blank canvas, this is it in action. Because the flavors of the caramel and the granola are so intense, the sweet cream kind of just takes a step back and lets everybody shine. And I really appreciate that. You're getting almost a savory note from the ice cream here, but the caramel is so intense that it pops back up to sweet again and you're just happy. So the real problem here is that picking a favorite from the main lineup for me is a gosh darn lie. The regular ice cream is always very good, but the seasonal, the experimental flavors, that is where the action is. Like the one I picked up that you can't get anymore, so I feel bad even mentioning it. Meet Paiden Kamala Mode. Excellent pun of a name aside, this is literally one of the best Molly Moon ice creams I've ever had. It's like this comforting autumn hug of an ice cream. It was sold to me as a Honeycrisp apple pie ice cream with pie chunks and a chai caramel sauce. I don't taste any apple in this and I don't care. It's chai, it's caramel, there's oat bits, there's pie crust. It feels like, like the perfect autumn ice cream somehow. 
and I'm sad that I can't get any more of it. And I'm sad that Editor Jess has to watch this knowing she's finished it all. Because I know it'll be gone by the time this gets to editing. <laughs> so really, if you see a seasonal from Molly Moons, make sure to try it. It's probably going to be the best time. So that was a not so quick taste test of Molly Moon's ice creams, at least the grocery store edition. I hope you get to try some of them soon, if not I hope you can in the future. If you visit Seattle, definitely try all the ice creams, especially the Molly's Flight that is a hoot. It is 13 scoops on one plate and a blast, I will let you know. If I had to pick a least favorite, it's probably gonna be the sweet cream, only because when I want a blank slate ice cream flavor, I tend towards vanilla personally. This is not a worst ice cream, this is more the one I'm least likely to buy. Which speaking of which, the house favorite is Yeti. We order this so dang much. I feel like it's in like every grocery order right now. I grew up on all the Ben and Jerry's and this is kind of like the local Ben and Jerry's for me. And I really like, I really like granola, so this is great. Which do you think would be your favorite? I'd love to hear all about it and clearly we can make some really cool Sunday combinations. Just saying that salted caramel melts chocolate together. Good stuff. As always, it was super great hanging out with you. Please hit those like and subscribe buttons if you haven't subscribed already so I can keep bringing you all the ice cream. And with that, I will catch you next time. Later! So there was this hot second where we couldn't find the Yeti. I thought it was actually like in our quarantine area for mail and we were freaking out thinking there was melted ice cream somewhere in the house. But no, we are such Seattleites that it was underneath the two pounds of frozen raspberries in our freezer.